Reginald Owen, Pippa Scott, Christopher Dark, Jess White, and starring Gardner McKay as Adam Troy. Balamigi specials, satisfaction guaranteed. Or double your money back. Hey, you said that, I didn't. <laughs> Here, lad. Uh, one minute. Buy yourself a B-29. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Crail, there's no such thing as tipping on Tahiti. Honest? I always thought that was just a bunch of guidebook palaver. <laughs> no, it's the gospel. Excuse me. Here's to us, Johnny boy. Well, I hope we take them for every cent they've got. Easy, boy, easy. These are nice people we're dealing with. Let that old school tie shine through, not San Quentin. Nice people. <laughs> I still say we ought to have Ted Grayson flying us around. Take us only three days instead of 30 by boat. What makes you so impatient? There is nothing that gets a sucker's guard up faster than the thought of his money taking off in an airplane. <sniffs> Out of sight. Now, this is a game where you have to be relaxed, unhurried like a boat. But Grayson will be on a standby in case we should ever need him. I heard that. I heard that. No, sir. Hey, Skipper, uh, Mr. Crayle has been waiting to see you. My name is Frank Crayle, Captain. This is my associate, John Merrick. Nice meeting you, Captain. Uh, we'd like to charter the Tiki if she's available for about a month. Business or pleasure? Business. John and I represent the Pacific Orient Insurance Company. Oh? A tailor-made insurance, Captain. Our company is introducing a new policy covering the copra plantations against typhoon damages. Well, that's a little risky in this part of the world, isn't it? That's true, Captain Troy. But the company has made a careful study of this project, and, well, we have every confidence that it's feasible. Now, if we can sign 80% of the plantation owners, then Pacific Orient can offer complete coverage. Where do you want to go? We picked the Society Islands as a test area. Here's a list of the calls we want to make. Two dozen in all. You are familiar with most of the ports we'll be stopping at, aren't you, Captain? Most of them. Does this have to be an exclusive charter, or will I be able to pick up cargo where I find it? Well, suit yourself. Uh, pick up cargo where I find it, with 10% of the profit applied against your charter fee of $100 a day. You've got a deal. Can we sail tomorrow morning, Captain? How's 7 o'clock? Couldn't be better. Come on, John, we've got a lot of paperwork. See you tomorrow morning. Right. Give me a piece of paper for the supply list. That sounds like a great deal, huh? $100 a day for... Oh, no. What's wrong? Well, I've got a date tomorrow night. And I mean this girl. The most gorgeous female on Tahiti. Absolutely, Absolutely the living end. end. Oh, now, come on, Adam, buddy. You've got to listen to reason. You better play some suffering music, Kelly. Very much suffering? Very much suffering. Clay, you might like to take the trip for me, huh? Nope. That's final? Yep. Okay. 
But boy, you guys should have seen her. She was about five seven, blonde, blue eyed. No. Yeah, then this isn't the same girl. You know, to drown myself. <laughs> Let's be back in the ship early. Oh, thanks. Can I help you, ma'am? Yes, I'll have whatever Captain Troy is having. One Valamiki special. Won't you sit down? Yes. Here. Well, I couldn't help overhearing. How did you know my name? I saw you this morning, I asked. Do you mind? Not at all. What's yours? Phyllis Dunn. It's a nice name. I hope it stays with you. You know, I was beginning to think this whole vacation was going to be a total loss. Well, nobody's allowed to leave Tahiti thinking that. May I show you the island? All or any part of it. Um, my husband and I are separated. Does he know it? Relax, Captain. You're a man of the world, aren't you? Uh, just a sailor who's learned to steer clear of hidden reefs and married women. That's right. William Tackett's my name. How do you do, Mr. Tackett? I'd like to charter your ship. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. We've just taken on a charter for tomorrow morning. But this won't take that long. We can get to Maria and back before morning. I'll pay you $2,000, Captain. <laughs> Why? For that much money, you shouldn't ask questions. For that much money, I should ask questions. Why? You don't need to know what you're carrying. Five thousand. Captain. I'll give you ten seconds to get out of here, Mr. Tackett. Honesty, indisputable. That does it, Otto. Yes, sir. After you get these supplies from Clay, load them, sound the water tanks. Yes, sir, I'm coming. Captain Troy. Ambrose Feather, sir. My man Osborne. How do you do? I'd like to charter your ship. <laughs> well, I'm afraid I've already got a charter. Oh, but you can't have. I mean, well, uh, can't you cancel it? I'll give my word. Oh, yes, and you won't change your word. I have it, sir. Perhaps the captain would consent to detour a bit. Capital idea, Osborne. Where are you heading, Captain? The Bora Bora first. My island's on the way to Bora Bora. What's the name of your island? Feather Island, sir. Tungaloa is the official name, but I own it all. Oh, I've heard of it, yes. That's only a few hours out of my way. Add another hour to unload our supplies, sir. You can be merrily on your way again. And richer by, shall we say, $300? Well, if my other passengers don't mind... Thank you, Captain. It's most important I get back. I said if my... I'm very grateful. Yes, indeed. What time are you leaving? Uh, 7 a.m., but... Excellent time of day. Bright and invigorating. Good day, Captain. Good day, Mr. Feather.
Got the droid? Gentlemen, good, good. Mm -hmm. Beautiful weather? It certainly is. How about that? Our first pigeon right here on board with us. Yeah, and plump with family pride and social position. When do we go to work? Later, Johnny. Always let the sucker make the first move. Magnificent ship, Captain. How do you like it, Mr. Feather? I've always loved the sea, in fact or fiction. I must go down to the seas again. For the call of the running tide is a wild call and a loud call. And a clear call. Oh, yes. Uh, Tennyson. Uh, Mayfield, I think. Oh. Well, <laughs> When do you expect we'll make our landfall, Captain? Well, with this wind holds, we should raise your island about dawn. Ex, I've been gone a week now, and I certainly miss her. She's a beautiful island. A man like you will appreciate her, Captain. I'm sure I will, Mr. Captain. I know we've hit it right this time, Osborne. I feel success in the air. I can too, sir. You should feel proud of yourself, sir. Frankly, I am, Osborne. I've searched a long time for so fine a son-in-law as this Captain Troy. Yes, sir. <laughs> Let's get the gangway. That's good. Make her off. All right, get the stern line out. Oh, ah, that's where the heart is, sir. Indeed. Osborne, you've no idea how gratifying it is to know that all this will never fall into the hands of a pompous fortune hunter like Philip Gordon. Yes, sir. I do hope you're right, sir. Right? Just look at that man. Easy. Okay. Tell me, Osborne, how can she possibly turn her back on someone like that? Mm, Captain Troy is a splendid specimen, sir, but Miss Mariah does have a mind of her own, and she's inclined to be suspicious of your attempts by now. Nonsense. Then why isn't she here to meet us? Well, she didn't expect us this soon. She's probably taking a dip in the lagoon. Take my word, Osborne. This time, I brought back a winner. All right, cut the engine. A real winner. And now just this last copy, Mr. Feather. Looks like a good policy, gentlemen. Thank you for bringing it to my attention. It was our pleasure, sir. Now I'd like to take a look around the island, if you don't mind. Please do. I'm sure you'll find it enchanting. Thank you. Congratulations, sir. Oh, thanks. Selling's easy when you've got a good deal to offer. You've certainly set a fine example for all the other planters, Mr. Feather. I'm sure they'll thank you for it. Gin and tonic, gentlemen? Aha! Just what the doctor ordered. Shall we enjoy them on the veranda? You know, sir, now that you're one of our policy holders, I somehow feel a lot closer to all this. You have a fine setup here, sir. Thank you. How long did you say you've owned this island? It's been my family for over a hundred years. Its traditions are handed down from father to son. You have a very lucky son, sir. Oh, but I haven't got a son. I have a daughter. Miss Mariah, sir. Very intelligent and beautiful girl, if I say so myself. Unfortunately, she finds it a little dull here in the island. She favors the excitement of Melbourne. 
Honolulu, San Francisco. Well, everyone to his own taste, as the woman said as she kissed the cow. <laughs> Do you like living in the islands, Captain Troy? Finest place to be in the world. I wouldn't worry about your daughter. I'm sure she'll marry the kind of man who'll change her mind. It's my intention that she shall. I, I mean, it's the father's duty to help his only daughter find the right man. Don't you agree? Oh, certainly. How old is she? 21. Then I don't agree. I think at 21, you're old enough to decide things for yourself. Folders. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to frighten you. Who are you? My name's John Merrick. Who are you? Mariah Feather. My father owns this island. I know. I came here with him on the schooner Tiki. Father brought you here. No. It's well, not... it's a waste of time. You can just go right back where you came from, Mr. Merrick. Lady, I don't know what you're talking about, but you know something? You have lousy manners. It is a fine island, Mr. Feather. I'd really like to hang around here for about a week, but I can't. I've got to go. Just a few days, please. Just cargo and passengers waiting. I do wish I could find a way to go. Excuse me. Don't go away just yet. Guess what? We have company. What did you say, my dear? Oh, don't play that game with me. I don't understand. You understand perfectly. I've met your new prospect. But you couldn't have. He, uh, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, Father, please. Once and for all. I'm going to marry Philip Gordon when he gets back from Auckland. So please, please stop bringing your Mr. Merrick's around. Merrick? Mariah, once again, you've hurt me deeply. By seeing through your little schemes? By jumping to conclusions. Wait here. Captain Troy, may I see you, please? I'm going to show you how unfair you've been to a devoted parent. Captain Troy, my daughter, Mariah. How do you do? How do you do, Captain? Captain, to settle something between my daughter and me, would you kindly explain just how I happened to come home as early as I did? Oh, that's easy. I was under charter to Mr. Crail and Mr. Merrick around the Society Islands. Your father talked me into leaving him and Osborne off here. Oh. You, you mean Mr. Merrick and that, that other man, they're, they're going on? They're leaving here? That's right. We're all leaving. Right away. Oh, Father. And that's exactly what I wanted to talk to you about, Mariah. Captain Troy went out of his way to bring me back, and naturally, I offered him the hospitality of our home for a few days. But he refused. Had to. I've been a chartered American Crail, and I've got cargo to Bora Bora. Oh. Mariah, can't you get Captain Troy to stay? At least for dinner? Oh, please do, Captain. That is, unless you don't like Bouillabaisse. She cooks it herself, once a week, every week. I love your business, Feather. Her name is Mariah. Join us as soon as you can, my dear. We've the whole afternoon ahead of us. Yes, dear. She's lovely, isn't she? Very. Oh, there you are, sir. I wonder if I might have a word with you, sir. It's about tonight's menu. Of course, I'll do. I'll be with you in a moment, Captain. Uh, 
How goes it, sir? Are you staying to dinner? Just dinner? Oh, that's not long enough, sir. No, it isn't. Not by long shot. Osborne, do you have a bucket? A bucket, sir? That's what I said, blast it. Certainly you know what a bucket is. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> preserve us. I do wish there was something I could do to change your mind about leaving so quickly, Captain. I don't have much choice, Mr. Feather. No, you don't. You have your responsibilities. I like that in a young man, taking care of his responsibilities. Well, I managed to get a little fun, too. Yes, of course. I believe that a young man should sow his wild oats. So do I. Then, on the other hand, he must face up to the really important things of life. He must consider settling down, getting married. It's a man's duty to build something permanent, something that will mark his contribution in life. Congratulations on your contribution, Mr. Feather. Mr. Parker, Mr. Crayle, my daughter Mariah. How do you do? Ah, uh, Mr. Merrick, I understand you've met my daughter. Yes, we met. Uh, it was such a brief meeting, I'm afraid I didn't have a chance to welcome you to our island. Your Honor, as the natives say. Mariah, my dear, have you seen Captain Troy's ship? Oh, yes, it's beautiful. I saw it from my window. She's a bald-headed schooner, isn't she? About, uh, 90 tons. Eight. Ah. She must draw about, uh, nine feet. About? What speed? Oh, well, with that rig and a fresh breeze, about five knots. Don't be surprised, Captain. Mariah loves the sea. Molly Sater, too. She could sail the tiki by herself. As a little girl, she'd race the native lads in an outrigger and trounce them every time. Father, I'm sure Captain Troy isn't that interested. Oh, but he is. He... Hello, Osmond. Missed you about? I had to empty a bucket, sir. No, it's quite. I'll be a good chap and refresh the refreshments for our friend. I wager you play a smashing game of horseshoes, Captain. Well, uh, he's great. Aha. Uh -huh. Perhaps you met your match, my dear. But I was quite taken with her game and I'd appreciate it if you trounced her soundly. This I've got to watch. Perhaps you and I could play a game of chess, Mr. Parker. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I don't play chess. But then, on the other hand, I'm not very keen about horseshoes either. <laughs> Mr. Parker always been such a nature lover? Always. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> How about another game? That's a good idea. I'm sick of this one. Who is this? Oh, stop pretending. Pretend? So you're the prize package my father picked. Well, you could march right over that bush and tell him that I wouldn't marry you or anybody else. It's the last thing I did.
Good afternoon, Captain Troy. What she said true? Did you bring me here to marry her? Well, now, Captain, as a matter of speaking... Yes you... or no? Yes. Everything Mariah said was true. But you must understand... I understand. You're out of your mind. I'm leaving. Goodbye. But you can't leave. Why not? I've had a bucket of sand poured in your engine. And now, back to Adventures in Paradise. He even ran the engine. All the bearings are scored. There's more sand in here than there is on a beach. I could sail out of here without that engine, Mr. Feather. But I'm not going to. Like three days of solid work to undo the damage you did. You're going to pay for it. Oh, I'll gladly pay. And you can use all the facilities we have, anything. It'll cost you $100 a day plus expenses. Of course, Captain. Anything you say. Mr. Feather meant no harm, sir. Truly, I didn't, Captain. All I wanted was time for you and Mariah to fall in love. I just couldn't bear the idea of her marrying Philip Gordon. Well, who's he? Mariah's fiance, he thinks. She's nothing but a fortune-hunting dandy prat. All he wants is money, my money. Well, your daughter's fooled by a man like that, she deserves it. But she isn't. It's just that she loves excitement, and she's stubborn. She knows I dislike Gordon, so she's determined to marry him. I had hoped that with a man like yourself... As they she... say, Mr. Feather, marriage isn't made in heaven. Of course, Captain. I do hope that for the rest of your stay here, you won't be angry with me. Thank you. Oh, Captain, about the engine. Could it be a secret between us men? Embarrassing, you know. Oh, sure, sure. Thank you again, Captain. What a screwball. <laughs> I'm afraid we failed the game, sir. Failed? Captain Troy is staying for three days, isn't he? Yes, sir. And how long can a moth resist a flame? Yes, sir. I tell you, I'm not looking forward to mealtime on the tiki. Not after a dinner like this. <laughs> uh, nothing personal, Captain. You're right. Tiki's galley is no match for Mariah's cuisine. Did you hear that, my dear? Yes. Thank you, Captain. You may be glad to know, Mr. Crail, that you may be dining with us for at least three more days. What? I thought we were supposed to leave tonight. Yeah, uh, we were, but we developed engine trouble. Wouldn't want to get caught in a calm without auxiliary power. Excuse me, Father, gentlemen. Uh, I thought you might uh, play a little Mozart for us, my dear. No, no, thank you. Not tonight. I, uh, I think I'd rather take a walk. But it's dark. You can't possibly go out without an escort. Perhaps Captain Troy. Uh, would you like to take a walk, Mr. Merrick? All right, Miss Feather. Mariah. Mariah. The best laid plans of mice and men. Come on, old pal. We've got some engine work to do. Gentlemen. Good night, Captain. Mr. Parker. Need a bracer, sir? If you please. Now, what about that little chess game you were mentioning earlier? By all means. That's the most attractive daughter you have there. Yes, isn't she? That necklace she's wearing, a family heirloom? It belonged to my great-great-grandmother. Now it's a part of Mariah's diary. I assume you have it heavily insured. Oh, yes, indeed. 15,000 pounds. Looks to me like it's worth a lot more than that. Of course, I'm in the insurance business. 
Would you like to appraise the necklace? Why, of course. You keep it here in the house? Where should it be? Well, I should think in a bank vault. No need for that, Mr. Crail, when one lives on an island. scene of the crime. I certainly was rude here this morning. Why did you ask me to come for a walk? Does it matter? Not too much. I needed the air. That's one big chip on your shoulder. All the time. Why? If it's any of my business? It isn't. You still haven't answered my question. Why me here? Despite Troy? Yes. What's Troy to you? Nothing. My father brought him here because he wanted me to marry him. Sight unseen. He picked him out. And Captain Troy isn't the first. You're kidding. I wish I were. I want to live my own life. Pick my own men. My father doesn't seem to understand that. So that's your problem. Poor little rich girl trying to be independent. You don't sound very sympathetic. I could be. found me. What's on your mind? A diamond necklace worth about $40,000. Belongs to her. And believe it or not, her old man keeps it in a desk drawer. No safe, no burglar alarm, no nothing. You don't want to go after it, do you? Why not? Oh, I don't know the girl. I, I just saw you two just now. And? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I thought you were getting a little sweet on her. <laughs> Can't you just see her father presenting us to his friends? My daughter, Mariah, and her gentleman, John Merrick, ex-convict. How do we work it? We get a hold of Grayson first, make sure he can fly out here. I see Osborne. Didn't Mariah come in yet? Yes, sir. She went to bed, sir. She must be very angry with me. She didn't even come to say good night. Oh, good night, sir. Well, uh, how's she coming, Skipper? Moving as fast as we can, Mr. Colonel. Uh, not that we're pushing you, Captain. We just felt a little guilty about sitting around doing nothing. Thought we could be of some help. Oh, we'll get it. Yeah, fine. I'm sure you will. Uh, you coming, Johnny? Oh, I uh, think I'll watch for a while. Yeah, I'll do that.
Somebody else find it. We'll let it go as soon as our plane gets here. Mr. Feather. In here, Captain. I need a for the. It's a long story, Pat. Let's move. Too bad on your feet. She can't walk on that foot. How with them? I know it. She's not in a room. She's nowhere in the house. I searched all around the grounds, sir. There's no sign of her or of Captain Troy. What are we going to do? I'll take it easy, Mr. Feller. You're right, Chris. I should take care of our radio. That means we can't call out for help? No. And maybe they did. A rendezvous boat? Yeah, or a plane. They've got to get off the island some way. Listen, is there another harbor other than the one that Tiki's tied up at? The south end of the island. It's a good eight miles. There's nothing in between? No. Uh, Kelly, you go back to the Tiki just in case they double back. Now, have you got any guns? A uh, shotgun and a pistol. Good. Get them. Grayson's due any time. All right, let's go in here. We can't. All right, sit down there. Sit down. But I do as he says. Frank, get up on that rock. Keep your eyes open. What are you grinning at?
likes what he's doing. You mean you think he's sensitive, Captain? You mean he cares about other people's feelings? Not John Merrick. He takes what he wants. Doesn't matter whether it's a necklace or a kiss. If he wants it, he takes it. He's a cheat. Lay off, little rich girl. I didn't ask to go for that walk. You did. I didn't ask you to kiss me. You kissed me back. I was giving, not taking. Where were we supposed to go from there? Moon, June, wedding bells? Why not? It's happened to a lot of people. That's right, a lot of people do, but not me. Let me give you the whole message. I'm an ex-con. I did three years on San Quentin for armed robbery. That stops you, doesn't it? What if you knew that before? Would you have kissed me? Would you even have gone walking with me? Well? Yes, I think I would have. You're a liar. Hurry it up, will you, John? Let's go! Is she a liar? How can you believe her, Merrick? You're always running away before it's time to find out, like you're doing now. Merrick, you don't know what you want. Petty thieves take petty chances for what? San Quentin again? You haven't got the guts to take a big chance for what you really want for the first time in your life. Something you really need. that Johnny boy. I'm not going. What? Give me the necklace. You know I could blow you apart, Johnny boy. The necklace. She did get to you, didn't she? Need it, Frank. Okay, sucker. Good luck, Johnny. I'll need that, too. I'm very grateful for what you did. Any time you are sailing this way again, please drop in. My daughter and I would be very happy to see you. But, Father, I won't be here. What? Are my bags on board, Adam? At the forward cabin, Mariah. But where are you going? Wherever John Merrick goes. Bye, Father. Goodbye, sir. We'll be back. Looks like your plan worked out after all, Mr. Feather. Not quite the way I intended, I'm afraid. I do hope you'll be happy. Okay, man, let's get the gangway. I saw the stern line. Thank you.
wasn't even in the book, sir.